Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at a ship <laughs> that is, <laughs> yeah, da, <laughs> Captain Obvious, uh, that is infamous uh, somewhat uh, for, well, at least in my personal opinion, being not very good. Um, this ship, when it was by the people who created it, uh, they couldn't really figure out why they needed it in the end, uh, short of, well, the Japanese made one. We, sh we thought the Japanese made one, so we wanted to make one too. Uh, the ship that uh, combined the firing power of a, of a Baltimore-class heavy cruiser <laughs> with the size of an Iowa-class battleship. <laughs> and cost, probably. Uh, the ship that combines the worst, uh, the worst features of cruisers, like terrible armor, with uh, the worst features of battleship, like... Um, Terrible maneuverability. <laughs> uh, the USS Alaska. <laughs> One of the more pointless ships in this game, in my personal opinion. And uh, until very recently, I think a lot of you have shared that opinion that this ship is just... It's, it's, uh, it's, it's the discount Iowa. <laughs> it's a pocket Puerto Rico. It's the USS Alaska. Anyway, um, enough poking fun at that thing. Uh, so, what's so bad about the Alaska? Well, um, what's good about the Alaska? Um, she's got radar. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Alright, moving on. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> nah, nah. So, what have they done to the Alaska? They actually have uh, buffed her... So, the Alaska has seen a couple of buffs since she first came out. And when the Alaska first came out, uh, she, she was the largest man-made object on Earth. She was visible from lower Earth orbit. If alien had, aliens had come to visit, the very first structure they would have spotted from space would have been the USS Alaska. Because <laughs> that thing was had such a bad concealment. <laughs> and you couldn't make it any worse if you tried. Uh, so that's been fixed in the meantime. Uh, but uh, in 6.2, she has gotten the most significant uh, dispersion buff out of all the ships. And... Uh, that was, I think, 14%, so basically two precise aiming module. And she does get a precise aim too, which further increases that by 35%, which means um, we might now be able to actually compensate for one of the worst features of the Alaska, the guns. <laughs> because the guns are absolutely dreadful. These are... Uh, 305 millimeter guns, and the only way I can I can explain why these are, guns are so terrible is, is that they have been they have been copy pasted from Tier Four or something. Uh, yes, these are 305 millimeter guns that are struggling to penetrate cruisers. They can I have bounced shells of Neptunes in this thing. Uh, unless you are at point blank range, you will struggle to destroy light cruisers, <laughs> and don't even start on battleships. You need to weak spot target like bow and stern sections of battleships in this thing, even at close range, because she can... This thing can't penetrate the deck armor of an Izumo. <laughs> it's that bad. So uh, the, ar the armor piercing is complete rubbish. Uh, the high explosive is nothing to write home about, but uh, with the base range increase, she now has a range of 14 kilometers, which is, which is great, or it would be if you could actually hurt anything at 14 kilometers, <laughs> which you can't really. Uh, the, th the reload with 13 seconds is pretty long, given that this thing's got nine guns only, and that the HE is really more like okay-ish. Uh, she does have secondaries, which is, and she does have some AA, but it's not great, and it's only a def AA1, so uh, given the absolute size of this thing, <laughs> it's definitely not a support cruiser, but it sort of can be a little bit more. Anyway. Uh, let us have a very brief look at how I have set up the Alaska, because that has changed since the last time I touched this ship. And given that this is a premium, I am assuming the historical camouflage, which gives us additional range, uh, large couple of AAA range, and some more hit points, which are utterly needed. Because if you're looking at the numbers, while the Alaska has 44,000 hit points, um, her damage reduction is that of a British battleship. <laughs> And uh, the same with the Citadel protection. And the armor plating is definitely not as thick as one of, <laughs> on a British battleship. This thing gets absolutely massacred by large caliber armor piercing shells. Because it's the size of a flip in Iowa, that's why. 
Uh, anyway, enough ranting. Let's quickly go through. You can and probably should increase the firing range. Why should you do that? Because it's the size of a flip in Iowa. <laughs> That's why. Uh, jokes aside, you could also use the gun operator to get a little bit of a faster reload and a bit better turret traverse speed because while these are 305 millimeter guns, uh, they have a six degree per second turret traverse, which is not great. But it, I mean, it's workable, but still, um, it's not that the ship can necessarily outturn the turrets that easily. <laughs> she probably can, but um, equipment wise, uh, I have put the main battery mod three in there for more precision because precision is everything because you need to weak spot target on the ship to make the AP work. Uh, I have put the propulsion mod. I, I, I used to sail this with double steering to compensate for the dreadful uh, maneuverability, but it really doesn't, it brings her, it's battleship le level maneuverability, which, whichever way you're looking at it. And uh, I figured I might as well just live with it. And now that she gets a bit better range, that's actually more manageable now. And she gets better, pre better uh, precision on her main guns. And I am actually sailing with the concealment system, which was kind of ridiculous at the beginning, because then she would have just had normal battleship concealment <laughs> rather than whatever the hell that was. But uh, with that setup, we are now looking at uh, looking at a 14. Uh, we're looking at 17 second uh, time to full speed. It almost it almost it almost takes the same amount of time to get the ship from standstill to full speed that it takes to get the rudder from one side to the other. <laughs> But uh, that's just something you're gonna have to live with. Uh, that said, this now gets the, disper uh, the dispersion, the surface detection down to nine kilometers, which is actually workable. So, and you need it. <laughs> I have, as usual, played this ship with uh, two setups. First, the regular setup with the gen normal consumables and with a, uh, with a level nine captain. And I have played it with uh, George Dewey. Why Dewey? Well, Dewey has an interesting skill, but we'll get to that. First of all, uh, battlefield support for an additional uh, def AA. You could use the better torpedo alert, but um, I mean, you've got you've got a radar. Uh, you, you should know where destroyers are. Uh, you're not a destroyer hunter, by the way, so forget about that anyway. Uh, the better air defense expert. And I'm actually not using the fire supremacy because Dewey gets the gets a special precise aim which gives two charges. So with that, we actually get up to five charges of precise aim and um, it, it, uh, it, it is, however, at the cost of the, uh, the duration on the precise aim. So you, you can only use it for half the time, but you get 50% cooldown reduction and you get two extra charges. So you can use five charges, but pretty much just for one salvo throughout the game, rather than the uh, three charges that you might be able to squeeze two salvos in. Is that worth it? Maybe, maybe not, but it does allow the survivalist, which gives 15% HP recovery on repair kits, which is kind of necessary. Also, he's got um, improved, uh, he's got improved the improved extinguisher and the improved compartment in case you're coming under air attack. Um, Unfortunately, no APCS plus, but I'm obviously using the APCS. Uh, spoiler alert, I'll, I'll just tell you, yeah? don't, don't tell anybody, but it doesn't make a difference. Uh, and she gets the horizontal, uh, he gets the horizontal protection expert plus, which improves the deck by quite a bit. So that would be the premium setup. The other setup obviously uses, uh, the other captain would use uh, fire supremacy here instead to get an additional charge for the uh, for the precise aim because the precise aim is good and again you're going to need it so uh, is the uss alaska still complete garbage let's try out the first round is center control on golden channel and it is a tier 9 game so these are tier 8 carriers i would like you to remember that these aren't even tier 10 carriers she can face tier 10 carriers these are tier 8 carriers that's a lexington over there uh, Lexington, Massa, Neptune, Harbin, uh, Yugumo, Kagero, and another Kagero. So um, uh, double Kagero, uh, one Yugumo, and two cruisers that we should be absolutely predestined to completely obliterate if we get the chance. Plus we've got radar, plus, you know, things. And we are an American cruiser and we've got FAA and everything. So off we go and we'll see how that goes. Now, again, this is the standard uh, setup. So 
and this is with the regular heels and with the regular captain no apcs on this setup but uh, we'll, we'll see what we can what we can get ourselves into with golden channel with a ship the size of an iowa but without any of the good bits <laughs> Uh, we do have an Iowa, I believe, on our team as well, so uh, that's nice. Uh, let's uh, let's move into the capture zone. I'm I'm briefly debating with myself if I want to run the flank, but then again, there are three destroyers, and I am absolutely unsuited to deal with destroyers. Why is that, Terry? This thing's got radar. It should be great. Yes, but it's got a 13-second reload on these guns, and um, yeah, <laughs> and there comes the carrier. So one thing I can do here and uh, if i can pull this off then i'm actually quite happy about it i can pull the uh, i can attract the attention of the carrier because the friendly carrier gives us fighter uh, fighter support and the enemy carrier does not seem to be interested to uh, to be uh, dropping uh, to be dropping the destroyers so i am trying to dodge some torpedoes that's what i've been saving my damacon for and um, we have shot down seven aircraft which isn't bad but it's also not great and that means the um, the, the enemy carrier <laughs> has wasted his his strike completely, whereas the friendly carrier has not. Now there is the uh, very very light cruiser. Oh no, never mind. There's a Yugomo. Okay, I'm a piercing out at the Yugomo, and we get full penetrations mostly. <laughs> that tells you something, doesn't it? I mean, that's on seven kilometer with 305 millimeter guns. There's the Harbin. Unfortunately, I'm not reloading quickly enough that I'm probably going to hit his bow section and just overpenetrate. Yep, that uh, did nothing. That's the other problem. These shells are floaty as heck. Where's that Neptune going? Uh, okay, Neptune is exploring the rear of that island. Okay, well, he can. Uh, let him <laughs> let him be over there. Uh, that cargo is outside is outside uh, radar range, but if... Oh, no, nope, never mind. Torpedoes, that's why I'm sitting here, because there are... Oh, there comes the carrier again. And uh, yes, with an acceleration of that, there's no way I'm actually getting out of that. And uh, it's a flood, so I'm going to have to dump upon that. And that's that. We do have the uh, Pan-Asian cruiser HE spamming us here. And he, he knows how to use the islands for concealment. Well done. So I do have to blind fire, but I think he's a bit closer. I think he's actually inside the capture circle. Yeah. And... Um, I might just, because my Damacon's on cooldown, uh, I do have a 25% uh, fire flooding uh, uh, resistance. Can I lob this? No, I cannot. But uh, I do have to help out against that Harbin over there. Uh, it's uh, Fletcher and the Z are rushing it. The good thing about this is that uh, well, the enemy team is not particularly interested in the capture circle, except that guy over there. Oh, oh nope, cargo torps, dang it. Didn't pay attention. Ship turn, turn. No, it doesn't turn. And of course, it's a perfect flood. <laughs> Because why wouldn't it be? Okay, so there come the torpedoes. There's the enemy cargo who is outside the capture circle. And I am just over penetrating that thing. Uh, not an awful lot I can do about it, but I can dodge out of the way of those torpedoes and um, just generally keep uh, keep the enemy team... Well, give, give the enemy team something to shoot at. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big target. Let's see if we can... Oh, no, actually Fletcher took, uh, takes out the cargo. That was the Massa, we are at, uh, who's also not interested in the capture circle, who had 878 hit points. There come some more torpedoes. Uh, time to go undetected. Maybe we can get shot off at that cargo. Come on, dispersion improved. The rear turret hits, hit the island. I don't think any one of those shells is actually going to land because the cargo has actually moved a little bit. And now I'm air spotted, which is not good because I'm on 800 hit points. And it's half a minute until my, my heel comes off cooldown. So I'm just tacking myself into behind that island. And the only one who can hit me from here is the carrier, who has shown a, a relatively strong propensity from trying to sink me throughout this battle. Uh, given by the 11 aircraft that I've shot down with my two defensive AA, there comes another strike. Uh, shots out at the cargo. Nope, can't, still can't lob that. Def AA up. There come the dive bombers, and that should be. Yeah, there's not. There's not an awful lot I can do about that, and I have done a grand total of 15,000 points of damage. Woohoo! <laughs> But, you know, I've been sort of useful. Now, you could have said, well, you could have been more aggressive. What? With a 13-second uh, turn time you and the size of an Iowa, you want me to go to the capture circle with the Massachusetts out there and three destroyers and no sonar. Yeah, that's not happening. Yes, I have radar. Yes, that would be nice. But I'm not a destroyer hunter <laughs> unless they're doing completely stupid things and a carrier out there. So uh, the Alaska is a back row support ship. 
and um, you kind of she kind of works if you hide behind your team or support your team from the rear. And to be fair, to be fair, I would say um, I'm completely okay with uh, keeping the carrier distracted for half the battle and having him not hit hit my destroyers who are in the capture circle and uh, have him lose his team bimbling around aimlessly on the flanks rather than supporting there by uh, just uh, seeing red and focusing on me. And that Z is running into all those torpedoes, but he should survive that. So um, Carrier is now coming under threat, but either way he's lost this, so so that's that. So that was my uh, that was sort of my impression of the Alaska when I started playing the ship. And I figured, okay, okay, special special uh, special circumstances here maybe from the matchmaking. But what do you do with an Alaska in a center cup? Um, you, you're not really suited to go towards the center at all. You're, you're more of a you know back row support ship. You can use the radar obviously and it helps against uh, torpedo rushes, but um, there's also not an awful lot that you can do to defend yourself from said torpedo rushes unless people do something very very silly. So yes, we have uh, 160, 160 points of, of team score uh, for coming under air attack and everything else. And where did we come in the team? At the bottom of it. <laughs> I have been of marginal use to my team, let me put it that way. So I did it again. And this time it's with the legendary commander and with the, uh, with the premium heals and premium everything. So this is the, I have thrown all the money I can at the ship and see what we got out of it. Uh, again, it is center cup, but it's epicenter at least, in chain. And we're fighting Monty, GK, a Prince Ruprecht, an Isumo, a Minotaur and a Wooster. No destroyers. So no carriers, no destroyers. That should be good, right? Well, um, things like, at least there are no Yamatos. <laughs> Yamatos eat this thing for breakfast. <laughs> Which is probably for the better that it never actually saw any action in battle. But um, we'll, we'll try to find a position where we can sort of hide behind our team a little bit and uh, try to support it from back there. So, who do we spawn with? We are spawning in the middle, which is okay, but I don't want to go through the middle. I need to be a little bit away and have some island cover to uh, make myself useful in this monstrosity. Uh, there's, there's a Yamato, but it's on our side, so hopefully that works out better. We have one destroyer. It would be really nice if that destroyer could make it to the center cup, because even if the enemy team manages to radar him, I mean, there is a Worcester, we've got some big guns here, and uh, he, shouldn't, he shouldn't necessarily be afraid. So he should be able to outspot the Worcester easily, and then just disengage if he needs to, while we are all killing the, killing the Worcester in the meantime. So could you go to the center cup, please, Yugomo? Maybe? Yugomo, where are you going? I mean, you're inside the capture circles, that's a, big, that's a good start, but what are you doing there? Are you laying an ambush? On the other end of the map? For what exactly? Who do you expect to come around here? <laughs> okay, everyone's pinging him and he's like, nope. <laughs> Ain't going there, there's bots in there, it's scary, I don't want to go. Okay, so we'll shoot at the bot Izumo. We've got enough of the um, precise aims that uh, that we can use them a bit more frequently. And there is the Worcester. And he is kind of sitting broadside at 12 kilometers, which is not the, the maximum range of this thing. So shots out. This is not with the precise aim. But let's see what the shells are doing against the Worcester. That wasn't completely terrible. Um, we could, we can, I mean, given that this is a light cruiser, <laughs> we actually did a bit of damage to him. And this, this, this per, the dispersion can be really, really nice if it wants to be. But um, we will need a little bit more. We need him to hold still for a little bit longer over there for us to actually do something against this thing. Whereas uh, bigger guns would have been probably more effective. But uh, it's a good start. There come some torpedoes. That should be minor torpedoes. And um, there comes a Montana, which is extremely brave. So uh, that Prince Ruprecht sits, uh, sits still back there, so I can kind of use the guns against that thing. And uh, while well, Yugomo, you've been you've been laying, you probably feel vindicated now. You've been laying in ambush here for this whole time, um, <laughs> and you were right. Ow! <laughs> that was the Montana, and I wasn't even bow in. But yeah, that Montana is now dead. Um, 
after throwing his ship away needlessly and Worcester is now at under 10 kilometers so maybe I can do something like citadels or something against that thing let's see how that'll go and no that would be semi pens <laughs> Do I need to manually aim as uh, manually aim at a light cruiser to do, <laughs> to hurt it? <laughs> okay, um, I am drawing a little bit of fire now from the Worcester. He is marginally annoyed that I'm shooting at him, but uh, let's see if we can actually do some damage. I mean, he's sitting there, uh, relatively unperturbed, but uh, there come some more torpedoes. But yeah, we are uh, we're slowly wearing him down. <laughs> Okay, that should be the end of the Worcester, surely. Uh, let's see if my shells ever get there. Uh, okay, the Ohio takes him out. Prince Ruprecht is woken up and figured, oh, um, I might need to push this flank alone into the whole enemy team uh, so I can get my torpedoes away while the rest of my team is on the other side of, this, uh, of the map. Um, yeah, no, that's not how this is going to work. But do notice that this is a Prince Ruprecht. And I am I am weak spot targeting. I mean the gun the shells are so slow that I'm actually that I'm actually struggling to get them um, to get them into the bow section. But you do need to weak spot target even that thing. And yeah, these top, these sea mines I can outrun these without problems. Uh, you do need to weak spot target. Uh, there's the Minotaur. The Minotaur I might be able to actually hurt, but uh, there's also an Izumo. So let's get some shots out at the Izumo while hiding behind our team. And yeah, that does nothing. So uh, that's a stationary Izumo, I will I will Precise put that there. Well, precise aim up, bow section targeted. Shots out, nine shells. Floaty, 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 floaty. Nope. <laughs> he must have moved like a centimeter or something. <laughs> yeah, he moved slightly backwards. Uh, so yeah, that's that's that then. Um, let's get into the middle ring. There's also Grosser Kur first. And we are actually down to four ships, which is quite quite amusing I don't after after half the enemy team just YOLO the one by one into our team so um, uh, Yugomo is now getting some torpedoes away and uh, against the Worcester uh, not the Worcester the Izumo and has died in the process because he has unnecessarily suicide rushed the Izumo which he didn't need to because the thing was sitting broadside on to it the whole time but anyway he has done his damage and yes uh, we are not doing any damage against that gk whatsoever uh, unless we are managing to hit the bow stern section which at this uh, it's actually doable look at this look at this ah will you see that eight shots on target so i've got my range i've got my target uh, the, the gk is busy shooting at some at the rest of my team which is always good and um, i can finally farm some damage here so I mean, i'm getting semi pens sometimes but if I can manage to hit the bow section, I am actually starting to do some reasonable amounts of damage. So, uh, there we go again. Another try. Okay, you see? Full pens. This is with APCS, by, by the way. 305mm armor-piercing shells with APCS. Uh, needs to target bow and stern sections to do something. Uh, so, yeah. Um, is this ship better? Yes, it is. It's not completely ridiculous anymore. This is actually, well, I wouldn't call it, call it good, but it's it's playable. Before it was it, it was just a, it was just a laugh, but uh, now this thing's playable. And if you've been pretty much unbothered for the whole game and had nothing but battleships and light cruisers to shoot at, you can almost do 70, uh, 80, 000 points of damage in a tier eight in a tier nine premium ship with all the money thrown at it that you possibly can. So um, yeah, there's that. And uh, where did we come in the team? Let's have a quick look. Yeah, 76,000 points of damage. A third in the team. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much what you can expect unless the enemy team does completely stupid things and decides that they want to fight you at point blank range. And even then you probably need to weak spot, tar weak spot target this thing. So I'm still not a fan, but uh, it's, it's, not, it's, it's an okay ship after this change because you can actually make it use in the way that it was intended to and compensate for your lack of armor by using the um, by using the range and actually get some shells on target with the improved dispersion so good good buff on the ship and um, makes her not completely completely silly in my opinion and that's it for me today thanks everybody and i will see you next time bye bye